Why does my drone keep accelerating even when I don't increase the throttle? Shreyanch me rota, rotra, rotra, rotra. Um, I'm going to guess that you have armed the drone with the props off and then the motors speed up. This is a normal thing that happens when you arm the drone with props off. It, it's because the quadcopter, the flight controller, is trying to fly the drone. But since the props are off, then it can't fly the drone. And so it speeds the motors up and it just keeps trying harder and harder to fly the drone. And no, nothing's happening, so it's just trying harder and harder and that's why the motors speed up. And you might say, well, why is it trying to fly the drone? It's just sitting there on the ground. Well, even when the drone is sitting there on the ground, the flight controller is still trying to kind of push against the ground and balance it. And, and that creates a feedback loop. So that's normal. Where is Ghost? Asks Baldman FPV. They still have product selling, but support and community is almost non-existent. Yeah, I mean, that's the risk of a new control protocol if it doesn't reach a critical mass of adoption that's why that's i gotta tell you that's why i say to a beginner getting into the hobby you should bite the bullet and get over the learning curve of express lrs it's going to drive you crazy potential some people a lot of people it's going to drive you crazy like why didn't they put a damn bind button on the receiver. How hard would it be to put a bind button? Captain Bry. No, I'm not picking on you. This whole three plug thing is so freaking confusing. Why isn't there a bind button on the radio? Well, that's not how they do it. It's not how you do it. You got to bite the bullet and learn the new thing. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. I got to tell you, this MT-12, oh, I'm pointing over there. Binding this MT-12... I haven't even put a bind phrase in this. Oh my God, I need to put a bind phrase in this. Wow, I need a different bind phrase for my surface radio. Interesting. I just pushed bind on the radio, did the three plug thing on the receiver and it bound. It was so nice because finally we're starting to see receivers where they're shipping with the 3.x on it and it'll just bind. I know you just replugged three times. I mean, it's, and then did you hide the bind button in the quad. You can't get to it. I mean, I feel like replug three times is just give me both than of them. Give me both of them. I want it all. But, the, but then the manufacturers have to BOM in a bind button, and then they're all going to complain about it. Then it's got to take physical space, and like I'm just saying, like excuses. Why, what's the point? Why is it better? the point? Is this? Here's the point. The point is that some guy who doesn't know shit about shit, he's coming. He's used to surface radios. He doesn't know shit about flight controllers. He doesn't know shit about firmware. And he's like, okay, I'm going to give this Express LRS thing a try. Where's the bind button? You're like, well, I don't have a bind button. I'm just saying, it might be nice if they also had a procedure that was consistent with what a person is used to. And then they can go through the learning curve eventually. It's just, I don't know. Why doesn't it have a bind button? That's the point. Why doesn't it have a bind button? Because they didn't they didn't do it that way. But they could have. And it would have simplified yeah. the induction of new people into the hobby of into Express LRS. Why don't all they, the versions just work together? Why don't you know what I mean? There's a bunch of things. But we if you say ask, right? if you say why doesn't three dot X work with two dot X as a as a person with any coding experience at all, I like you don't have to convince me that the backwards compatibility would have been a deal breaker. But like, if you're gonna, it, it's not hard to say here's a GPIO pin on the on the ESP32, and that pin is the bind button. There's a million ways you can initiate binding. There's no reason why there couldn't be one more, and it's a button. I love bind phrases. I'm a big fan of bind phrases. I use bind phrases. I use Wi-Fi. But every time I take, every time I imagine that I'm talking to somebody who has no experience with what with Express LRS, and the first thing I have to tell them is 
don't push the button. That's a bootloader button. That's not a bind. I know it looks like a bind button, but here's how you bind an express loader's receiver. You plug it in at three times in a row. I'm like, oh, I feel so, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, can you mix different brands for your ESC and flight controller? Yep, but sometimes you have to redo the wires between the ESC and the flight controller, but almost always it'll work. There are very rare cases, like there used to be, maybe there still is, but there used to be a Hobbywing ESC that the flight controller didn't have a five volt regulator and the ESC had a five volt regulator. And in that case, almost every flight controller has its own five volt regulator and it gets VBAT from the ESC. And that Hobbywing flight controller couldn't really be used with any ESC other than a Hobbywing ESC that had five volt on it. But that's a pretty, that's an outlier. Um, should I go with the DJI V2 or the Walksnail Avatar X? Cat Army Leader asks. Um, it, it's harder and harder to recommend the V2 goggle for someone just starting out. The V2 goggle is solid and there are still vistas out there that can be purchased. Um, there are basically no, uh, that's not even true. I just showed one. There are fewer and fewer bind and flies that come with, with the Vista on them, although they still exist. But basically, most things are moving towards the O3. But the V2s can also work with the O3, and they work just fine. The real limitation of the V2 is, number one, they're harder and harder to buy. So these days, you probably are going to be buying one used, um, which is not the end of the world, but it's not ideal in every case. And the other thing is that the V2, I think you have to ask yourself, when the successor to the O3 comes out, will the V2 goggle be compatible with it? The V2 goggle is currently compatible with the O3 air unit. It's compatible with the next generation. And the question you have to ask is, will it be compatible with the second generation after that? And I think a lot of people would assume that the answer is going to be no, although we can't know for sure. So if you buy the V2 today, you may be locking yourself into an ecosystem of video transmitters that are with the, with the Vista definitely at the end of their life and on the way out. And then the successor to the O3 is already kind of being teased, which means that maybe sometime in the next year, the O4 will come out, maybe just, you know, read the tea leaves, at which point your V2 goggles may now not have any currently produced video transmitter that is compatible with them, which is something that would give some people pause. Whereas the Avatar X is at the beginning of its life. Um, so those are some considerations. I'm not gonna give you a straight answer. I'm gonna just give you some things to think about. It's your money, so you have to decide for yourself. <laughs>